I'm sending it back. I'm a YouTuber that records Christian music. To do this, historically, I've been using a 2012 5.1 cheese grater Mac Pro, which you see down here. I've got the case off of it now because I've been doing some testing. I recently bought the M1 16 gigabyte Mac Mini, thinking that this was going to be an upgrade. I've been seeing a lot of rave reviews on this particular Mac Mini. So I ordered it, here it is. Mac Mini, 16 gigs, Apple M1 chip. And I edit my videos in Adobe Premiere. This is my old Mac, Mac OS Mojave. And it has a 12 core, 5690, 3.6 gigahertz. I'm not sure why it says 3.5, but it's a 3.46 gigahertz. 128 gigabytes of RAM and the AMD RX 580 8 gigabyte graphics card. So to do this test, I have loaded the exact same Adobe Premiere session and on the left you've got my 2012 Mac Pro cheese grater and on the right we've got my M1 Mac Mini with 16 gigs of RAM. So I thought that 4K video editing and playback would be smoother on the M1 Mac Mini based upon everything I was seeing. But let's actually take a look and see. Um, this is a session of one of my most recent YouTube videos called Constantly Abiding. And it's a four part hymn and there are five tracks total to it with also some effects. So let me show you what's going on here. So I've loaded the same session, constantly abiding on both Macs. Okay, Mac number one, cheese grater. Mac number two, M1. Same session, same footage. To give you an idea of the disk speed of each of these Macs, this computer has a one terabyte solid state drive attached to the SATA 2 bus of the Mac Pro. Let's see how fast it is. You see we're getting about 245 megabits up. And let's see what it does for down. 269 down. Okay, so let's test the M1 Mac Mini. And we have a whopping 3,600 up and a whopping 2,800 down. Much, much, much faster disk speed on the Mac Mini. But how does that translate into real world video editing performance? So in my timeline here, I have, in this particular shot, I have five videos. Each of these are a 4K source file that is not a proxy. So these are raw 4K straight from my camera. On my sequence settings, I have the iframe MPEG and 1920 by 1080 is my previews. And I have my resolution set to full and same settings on the Mac Pro, iframe MPEG 1920 by 1080 and my resolution is set to full. Now this graphics has the RX 580 with 8 gigabytes of RAM and this computer has the built-in M1 integrated graphics. So let's see what happens when I start playing my timeline on the cheese grater 2012 Intel Xeon Mac Pro. Playback looks smooth so far. A little bit of a drop frame on the transition, and we're dropping frames a little bit. Let me stop it. Something Sometimes I've noticed that if you start and stop playback after a transition, it will start back with smooth playback. And there's a smooth playback. So currently in this shot, we have four frames of 4K resolution. Hold on, burger. And we're about to switch scenes here to one that has five videos. And it did not drop a single frame. It's playing back smoothly. We're still on smooth playback. And I have a text layer here, text layer up here. 
is the lyrics down here, and I've got a picture background. Pretty simple setup. And we're buttery smooth playback. Let's see what happens on the M1 Mac Mini. So let's back up to the beginning, and let's hit play. Okay, we're smooth so far. Oh, what's going on here? The playback literally froze. And I'm not screen recording, I'm doing this on a camera to show you what's happening on the bare metal. It cannot even play a video with four. Now I'm gonna pause it, do the same thing again. I'm gonna start my playback back. It's t it took about five seconds to actually stop. And I'm gonna hit, hit play again. We're still dropping frames like crazy. There's only four videos playing here. Now granted they are in 4K resolution and I know I can make lower quality proxies of them but this is just the raw camera files full resolution. And let's see what happens when it switches scenes to five videos. It is just choking. I have much, let me switch back over to the, the cheese grater. Buttery smooth. All right, back over here on the M1. Really, really jerky. Now let me try playing with the uh, playback resolution. I'm going to hit stop here. Boing, 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 boing. All right. All right, let's see how the beta version, the M1 optimized Adobe Premiere, fares with this same timeline. Switching my resolution to full, checking my sequence settings. All right, let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, smooth playback there. Oh, big stutter right there. Okay, it froze. It froze on a cross dissolve. Cross dissolve is a pretty simple transition. Nothing 3D happening, it's just a cross dissolve. Okay, we still can't play four videos in the M1 optimized version of Adobe Premiere Beta. Let's switch our resolution to half. And let's see if that fares any better. Okay, we're still dropping frames at half resolution. Okay, still dropping frames, dropping frames. And let's start it in the scene that has five videos. And the M1 Mac Mini cannot play this smoothly. Despite having a solid state drive that is worlds faster. So its graphics is completely choking on simultaneous playback of five 4K videos in a 4K timeline. Whereas the 2012 5.1 Mac Pro with the AMD RX 580 can play it back with no problems at all. Okay, so I have four internal drives in my Mac Pro. And in order to think that this upgrade would actually work, I not only had to buy the 16 gigabyte M1 Mac Mini, but I also had to buy some accessories to go with it. I also had to buy this Thunderbolt dock so that I could actually hook up these three external hard drive bays over USB 3 
to my Mac Mini to emulate what I had with the four internal base before. So putting all that together, it was over $1,600 for the M1 Mac Mini, and I get performance that's worse than the 2012 Cheese Grater Mac Pro. I also make virtual choirs, and I cannot imagine putting a virtual choir through this kind of workflow on the M1 Mac Mini with 32 tracks playing simultaneously. Uh, on the Cheese Grater Mac Pro, when I make a virtual choir, I can play 8 to 10, sometimes t up to 12 videos simultaneously with no problems at all before I have to start muting and disabling tracks. If the Mac Mini is choking on only five videos at once, actually only four videos at once, there's no way I can actually render uh, virtual choirs for people. So for that reason, my friends, we're going to send it back. I will never, never.